Peggy 18. Hello everyone, Sven here to give you the full lowdown on what exactly this massive new update brings to the table. As we have always said, Outriders is not a live service game, although we have constantly updated and improved the player experience and focused our attentions on the core game to ensure players receive the game they deserved and we intended. This continued focus has allowed us to improve Outriders in a growing number of ways and in our commitment, we have gone to town. Now, a few short months later, we'd like to lift the hood on how we improved Outriders and show you exactly what we've been working on. Okay, let's take it from the top. When Outriders originally launched, the endgame experience players were having sadly didn't quite align with what you wanted and what we expected. This was arguably our greatest challenge to resolve. Rewards for expeditions were granted based on how quickly you could complete an expedition. For most players, this meant forcing themselves into a specific playstyle based on damage per second only. This stifled build diversity and the tremendous creativity our players bring to the table. Expeditions now have no timer by default. In this new system, finishing an expedition, regardless of how long it takes, will earn you that expedition's reward. Rewards have also been equalized, so that even expeditions that fundamentally take longer to finish will still be respectful of your time as a player and will feel rewarding to complete. This means that you won't need to sprint to the end of an expedition in order to get the best possible loot. You can take as long as you want and play an experiment with the character build of your choosing, all without being punished. You can still run a timed expedition if you prefer, but this would be only for bragging rights, not for improved rewards. At launch, grinding for legendary gear wasn't fun and didn't feel rewarding enough, even when playing on the highest difficulty levels. It was also very hard to find specific items due to the random nature of the system. Since then, we've implemented a 100% increase to all legendary drop rates, globally. We also developed an anti-duplication system, which reduces the likelihood of players getting items they already own. Furthermore, another change made to expeditions that will benefit legendary loot hunters is the final mission. The Eye of the Storm will now grant you a pick and choose legendary item reward upon completion. You'll be able to choose one of three gear pieces with your options being randomly pulled directly from the full loot pool. Finally, we've also made Tiago more useful. Tiago's shop now offers options for a mystery legendary purchase and you can spend drop pod resources to re-roll this elite offer. Getting all the legendary gear in the game is all well and good, but what if you want to look a certain way, but your build relies on mods or a set bonus that is only available on a certain piece of gear? It's one of the most requested features from you so far. We've added transmogrification which will let you change the visual aspect of an item to that of another item of the same type. For weapons, it also includes all sounds. Pretty cool, eh? Transmogging is entirely free. No convoluted systems, microtransactions or in-game resources required. And there's no limit to how often an item can be transmogrified. As soon as you've acquired an item, you will also acquire its transmog design. Your transmog library spans across your entire account meaning it collects designs from all your characters in your roster into one pool. Let's check out a few examples. Say you really love the look of your Devastator Legendary gear set, but you just wished your badass trickster could wear it, while maintaining your perfect trickster build. With just a few clicks in a visual customizer, your wish can now become a reality. After changing the look from the Trespasser set to the Marshal set, your trickster build with all its abilities is still the same. But now you're sporting a mean Devastator look. Anomaly Effigy is an effing awesome shotgun. But sometimes it's one of those days where you just don't feel like carrying around a bulky animal skull, feather, thing. Instead, you prefer your gun to look like one of the newly introduced weapons from the New Horizon update. Given you already found a Runa Scythe, you just need to apply the design onto your effigy and you're good to go. Don't forget, it's inside what counts. Underneath the new look is all the functions of the Anomaly Effigy. 
power and perks included. Transmog truly lets you express your style whilst keeping that perfect build that has been tuned to perfection for the most vicious of endgame expeditions. If you want to run into the eye of the storm with rusted gear, do it! If you miss that first legendary gun you sported, bring it back. If you have the Hellrangers back and want your pyro to look like a badass biker, well, you know the drill by now. Head to the visual customizer and raise some hell. We also don't want you to lose track of what items you already transmogged in your inventory. That's why customized gear will be marked by this new symbol. Another important note, you do not have to dismantle any gear to acquire the design for it. As soon as it pops up in your inventory, it'll be part of your transmog collection. Can you fill and complete your transmog library? To get you started and in celebration of the New Horizon update release, we have another little cool something for you. Everyone logging on this week, and that means new and existing players, will receive a unique legendary armor piece. Awesome changes, but feel like you've already completed everything there is to do in Outriders? Ah, a new expedition would be nice you say. We hear you. How about four? And how about for free? We added four brand new and massive expeditions, taking you to previously unexplored areas of Enoch, each featuring an exciting mini-story, connecting you with characters and events experienced in the main campaign. Molten Deaths will send you back to Eagle Peaks. When a drop pod signal activated, Dunham investigated and found a hidden power station. In order to take it back online, she wants you to clear out the station from any unwanted tenants, no matter the size, shape and form. The City of Nomads will confront you with a character who is haunted by the sins of his past. Very aware of his dark history, you decide to help him in protecting the old Pax village Oketu Atara. In The Marshal's Complex, Corrigan, the great Grand Marshal himself, asks you to reclaim a facility near Dead Rock Pass, taken by insurgents. It won't take you long to discover that this facility is anything but just another insurgent camp. Last but not least, the Wellspring. Tiago told you about a Pax legend of a sacred place called Atuma Itaru, where pilgrims would take long travels to sacrifice their treasures into deep wells. You and your team are in search of those forgotten riches, if it wasn't for this tremendous storm that seems to get stronger and stronger. Even new expedition players will already have access to the first of the four fresh expeditions, with the others unlocking at Challenge Tier 4, 8 and 12. And without a timer requirement to get the gear, feel free to take your time and explore. That's something you should definitely keep in mind when visiting these four new locations, cause they're a bit different and special in many ways. But wait, there's more. Here's a very fast recap of the many changes Outriders has undergone since launch and that you can look forward to when returning to Enoch as part of the New Horizon update. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, you just love to hum along to the tune of the opening video, but we reckon you've probably seen the intro one too many times now. Check it out. With the New Horizon update, you're able to skip it and get into the game much quicker now. Hey, you're welcome. For console players, we've added a number of new control settings and customization options. A core focus for us is to enable players to experiment with build diversity and play Outriders in a way that is the most fun to you. Using this as our guiding philosophy, we focused on buffing players, gear and skills for all four classes. If you stop playing shortly after launch and are only getting back into the game now, you will feel tankier and will deal more damage. Maybe take some of your previously neglected skills out for a spin too. Trust me, it'll be worth it. Here's how we improve the multiplayer experience. We now have fully functioning crossplay across all platforms, including Stadia. Matchmaking rules have been improved to enable players to find better connections that have less lag, rubber banding or disconnections. We also implemented a matchmaking rule to check for AFK players to help you find active partners and get into the game quicker. 
A kick protection from expeditions has been implemented. You can no longer be booted from a session before claiming your expedition reward. And I mean, what kind of jerk would do something like that anyway? We also greatly reduced multiplayer crashes and disconnection issues, leading to an overall much more stable experience. Whew. And I think that's actually about it for now. If you're after more detail, be sure to drop by the Outrider social channels over the next couple days, where we will be deep diving on the finer points of all these great changes. We hope you are as excited as we are for the New Horizon update, and we can't wait to share more about the exciting future ahead. Thank you again for your relentless support, and please stay healthy out there.